lawyer and an activist. You're not a doctor or a scientist. I, I, listen, Matt, we live in a democracy. We don't have a priesthood here. We don't have high priests who are telling us we're in charge of our own lives and Americans need to do their own research. And, you know, listen, people say trust the experts. That became a mantra during COVID. I brought over 500 cases and almost all of them involved a scientific controversy. My job is to read science, to learn it, and to be able to read it critically. And every case I've ever brought, there's an expert on that side and an expert on this side. When I brought them, when we brought the Monsanto case, there were three experts from Harvard, Stanford, and Yale. And we had three experts from Harvard, Stanford, Yale, and they were saying exactly the opposite thing. Oh, you know, saying trust the experts to me makes no sense at all. But trusting the experts is a function of religion and, uh, and totalitarianism. It is not a function of democracy. In right. democracy, we question everybody. We What's up, guys? Before I go any further in this topic, I always believe in this uh, thought, uh, Professor Richard Finman, Feynman. I always mess up the last name, but you guys know who I'm talking about. He has a quote that I always live by. Ask me a question that I can't answer, not an answer I can't question. And the trust the expert slogan, that mantra, I hated it. All my life, I hated it. Because if you're any steward of history, you know that experts got stuff wrong. They got a lot of things wrong because experts are human just like we are. And the fact of the matter that science is being, treated, is being treated like a doctrine, this is why many people believe, like Candace Owens, that science is a religion now. Science is a faith now. It's faith-based. The, the scientists are the priest, and whatever the priest says, it goes. Oh, the, the, the priest said that this is how... This is what the Bible actually meant when it said this verse. No, that's just his interpretation of the of the book. A lot of these experts get a lot of things wrong. And we're supposed to go with, we're always supposed to review and make sure we're doing the best that we can. At the end of the day, we as America, we're considered the most vaccinated country compared to every other country in Europe. Why is that? Like, what, what do we have to justify being the most vaccinated country? All I'm doing is making a comparison. Yet YouTube, if you talk about this topic here, they want to ban you because it does have something to do with the fact that pharmaceuticals make up a big percentage of advertising money. Who knows why? But the reason I'm talking about RFK is that some, you know, it's already coming out. Remember I told you about these allegations. This is going to be the number one way they try to take out people they see as disruptors. And it's the reality. They see they see RFK as a disruptor. And that's what we want. We want disruptors. We don't want the same old, same old. And in the day, the medical institution, the CDC, FDA, uh, uh, what else? World Health Organizations, you guys ruined your own reputation. COVID was the start of this. You started, you told, the expert told us, oh, natural immunity won't, won't, won't work on this virus. We have history to judge that. Yo, Natural immunity is a thing for diseases like the COVID-19. So all of a sudden, natural immunity just goes out the window? Is there, is there a reason for that? No, the experts said that is not going to happen. The experts say that we got to stand six feet apart, have a uh, face mask on. You can put it back down, eat, put it back up. Huh? How any of this makes sense? This seems more like a compliance test than an actual uh, scientific theory. And then years later, they finally want to admit it. Donald Trump says that the, the, the thing came from Wuhan and it came from China. And then they was sent, the experts were telling you it came from bats. Did someone eat a bat and that's how they got COVID? Like how, how it all came to be? Three years later, after he loses the election, then they, they find, oh, yeah, it came from Wuhan. Oh, Fauci was, uh, the, the U.S. money, uh, U.S. Medical Association was sending, I forgot where. The government, Fauci was sending money for gana function research. No, we was not doing that. Years later, you, we were doing that. Every time, based on historical evidence, every time we trust the experts, they led us astray. And now these same experts want to flex their status, flex their position. This is the reason why we have the fallacy of authority. The fallacy of authority, also known as appeal to authority or argument from authority, occurs when someone accepts a claim as true because an authority figure supports it. 
even though the authority figure is not a legitimate expert on the subject. They do this with climate change. They, and I'm not even saying the, the definition they have here is not the example. I want to focus on authority figure. Just because someone of authority makes an argument does not necessarily by default make it true. And this is what we have going on in our culture. I don't know if it's our education system. We've been taught not to critically think. See, as the New York Times, don't go down the rabbit hole opinion, please. Critical thinking, as we are taught to do, isn't helping in the fight against misinformation. 2021, New York Times. But, you know, this is, this, is, this, is, this is the problem I have. Slate also did the same thing. This is my biggest problem. When you tell me, hey, don't question anything. That's a sign. That's what? That's dogma. Dogma can't be questioned. Dogma is the one that says, no, I said so, therefore it is. That is totalitarianism. And they want to talk about fascism coming from the right. The left has been practicing this for a long time. Remember the science? The politicized science? Oh, there's a consensus that this is not true. Of course there's a consensus. You, del you delegitimize. You remove all the license of any expert that disagrees with you. Everyone's talking about the in college. It's the same thing in academia. Roland Fryer, when he came out with a stat that proved that police don't, does not have an anti-black bias when they do policing, a lot of people in his peers were telling him not to release the study because it'll hurt the narrative. It'll hurt the message. It'll undermine the narrative that they want portrayed in society. When did science become so ideological? And the funny part is science... Is every it, this, science has the same kind of uh, fallbacks, the same kind of drawbacks, the same kind of negatives as religion? Tell me I'm lying. Every drawback you have with associate with people associate with religion, science has shown to do the exact same thing. But I digress. Here's a three minute clip of. Why many people support RFK and why we want him confirmed. That's exactly the reality. Is he eccentric? Yes, he's a little bit eccentric, but he's a good person. If you look at his history, this is a guy who sued Monsanto, DuPont, General Electric. He's an environmental attorney. His goal was to clean up chemicals out of our environment to help people not get cancer. Now, if you look at what he's promised to do, it's three things. So the first one, obviously, is he wants to end corruption. If you look at the revolving door between our government agencies and industry, it's terrifying. I could give you a million different examples of how scary this is, but let's go to one that everybody knows, which is OxyContin. The guy at the FDA who approved OxyContin went and took a cushy job for Purdue. There are a million examples like this. He wants gold standard research when it comes to vaccines and drugs, but particularly vaccines because the research on those is not up to par. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. He wants randomized, human randomized control trials. So if you look at hepatitis B, which is one of the most controversial vaccines for kids because it's specifically for people who have risky sex and use needles and you can test the mother to find out if she's negative before you vaccinate the newborn. So why does a child even need this? Well, ironically, after the drug companies were given blanket immunity in 1986, they added 48 more doses of vaccinations to the schedule. But let's look at Hep B. What are the clinical trials that it goes through. I think your mind is going to be blown and I encourage everybody to look this up. It's on the FDA's website. They tested 147 kids in three trials and they monitored them for five days. Does that seem up to par? I don't think so. And then the second thing, and by the way, I could give you a million other examples just like this one. And the third thing is he was tasked with dramatically improving the health of Americans. And in case everybody's missed it, we are unhealthier than ever. 74% of adults are overweight or obese. We've all heard the diatribe. I'll run through it one more time. We're more infertile than ever. Infertility rates are going up 1% every year. Autism, 1 in 34 kids. It was like 1 in 10,000. 
When I was a child, I mean, we could go on and on and on. Does Rock Bottom have a basement? I don't think so. There's a loophole in the FDA that lets 10,000 chemicals into our food, 9,000 of which are banned in every other country of the developing world. I mean, my God, really? I, I think what you're seeing here is the absolute panic of big food, big farming, big pharma, and big insurance, and for good reason, because it's absolutely corrupt. And I, for one, am so excited about this, and I will do everything to help get this guy confirmed. And, and I don't care how much of an expert you are. If the mythology that you use, right, is the process that you use to come to a conclusion is flawed, then you'll come to a what? A flawed conclusion. Basic logic. It's basic logic. Oh, you're not doing gold standard research? Oh, you're not doing the same kind of research as other European countries that ban it? Oh, you have this obvious conflict of interest where vaccine, uh, these pharmaceutical companies have no liabilities when it comes to vaccines, so you, you unneededly added 48 vaccines to the schedule for our kids? Like, you, your studies don't even justify, hey, why do we need this thing? Like, the fact that our medical establishment cannot answer basic questions like, oh, why do we need this without going to some gibberish should be concerning to people. And this is the concerns that Americans have. So YouTube, don't censor me. Don't ban my video because last time I touched upon this topic, my video got banned. All I am is a concerned citizen asking questions like, yo, we have questions and they should be answered appropriately. Hey, why we don't have the same standards of as European countries? I need a justification for that. Don't just ban my video. Oh, misinformation. And you and then when I'm like, how is it misinformation? You don't reference a study. You don't reference a, nothing. No, no data, no evidence, nothing. You just said, oh, because the CDD, the CDC said so. The CDD said that this is safe and effective. I don't believe the CDC. That's a fallacy of authority. You 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 you're you're using an institution that has a large conflict of interest, and you're trying to lecture to me about me spreading misinformation. Just like you said that's opioids. I forgot. They said, the expert said a drug wasn't addictive and it ended up being addictive. Because at the end of the day, no one has to be an expert to judge outcomes. That's one thing experts seem to always forget. That you can, make, you can make all kinds of rationalizations, all kinds of justifications for why we should do something. But you can't rationalize your way out of the outcomes. How we're the, one of the unhealthiest, how is that we have less life expectancy than most of these countries in Europe? Make that make sense. Our diet's off. We talk about, hey, let's take artificial foods out of the food. You have people on the left making arguments why that, 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 does, that, doesn't, that doesn't matter. Having artificial ingredients don't actually help hurt your health. What kind of lie are you trying to sell? But I digress. I'd get really heated when it comes to this topic because end of the day, I believe in question everything. I am by nature skeptical. I'm a skeptical person by nature. It's hard to dupe me or trick me into doing something. I hate, the most thing I hate to be is deceived. If you deceive me into doing something, you will regret it. That's just my point of view. But I digress. I want, to, I want this journalist here to expose some more concerns about the health organization. And this is why we need RFK as health secretary. Let's continue. But I think for one, getting the conflicts of interest out of our regulatory agencies, I mean, that is going to be a big needle mover for health. I mean, if you consider the, the fact that 50% almost of the FDA's budget comes from the pharmaceutical industry, I mean, that's simply unfair. Wait a second. Um, let me stop you there. I don't think people can digest that. You're saying half the budget of the FDA, the FDA is supposed to regulate the food and drug industry. Half of that budget comes from the food and drug industry? Yeah, and I saw this play out in my own life. I mean, the reason why I've... And, and, and the Democrats, why isn't the current F H uh, health secretary doing anything about it? He's the first Hispanic uh, person to hold the position, but why he's, he ain't doing anything about this? Because they're puppets. Like, like the, you, you're giving outcomes that the American people don't want, and you wonder why you lost in an electoral landslide. Make it make sense, liberal. ...taken to task in terms of educating the public on how to live a more healthy... Um, life is that I had early onset dementia in my family. My mother had um, a form of dementia for many years, and I saw this recently in the field of Alzheimer's disease. There's 
it's it's a field that's rife with fraud. And ju and most recently, about two years ago, a drug was given accelerated approval by the FDA. The the experts on the panel were aghast that the FDA even did this, but it's a drug that's incredibly expensive. Very few can afford it, and it's minimally effective in terms of actually you know, catering to the symptomology of the, of the disease. And this is just one microcosm. And I think it has to do with the fact that these drugs are incredibly expensive. And there's this revolving door concept that's always broached, where you'll see one high-level officer from the FDA, you know, one year going on the next year to take up a cushy job at a pharmaceutical company. And over the past 20 years, we've seen 11 of 12 FDA commissioners actually do this. And, and the fact that, you know, mainstream media, legacy media, right, RFK exposed this as well. He, he exposed the fact that, yo, 75% of ad revenue coming for mainstream media is supported by pharmaceutical companies. Is there no wonder they would like to push back against RFK? Why is no wonder they'd like to call him, oh, he got worms in his brains. He's kooky. He's crazy. These legacy media people who shame and smear people as conspiracy theory theorists are spreading conspiracy theorists and hoaxes themselves. Make it make sense. Recently, legacy media just said that Joe Rogan believes in dragons. And I'm like, who are these people? Like, what the hell? Like, what, they, what are they trying to do here? Call you crazy, defame you, call you an abuser because a woman came out of nowhere and said, yeah, I've been abused by that man. Anybody can accuse anybody of anything. Nancy Pelosi assaulted me. Anyone can accuse anyone of anything. But then the media gives it more more, more uh, attention and credibility than other stories. If it hurt, if it if it goes along, if it hurts someone that they they want gone, oh yeah, yeah, we want to hear your story. But if it's against someone that they like, Biden, Doug Emhoff, quiet. Conflict of interest, anyone? Are you noticing yet? Huge conflict of interest everywhere. And you see why they hate the a lot of Trump's cabinet picks. I, I digress, right? Because end of the day, we I see I see it for what it really is. All these people are just trying to protect their own interest. That's it. And um, <laughs> Wait, so they, I so they work. So like some guy at Pfizer leaves Pfizer, goes to work for the FDA, then leaves the FDA and goes back to Pfizer. And like same yeah. thing with Kellogg's. Like the Kellogg's company just sends their people back and forth and back and forth. And they just swim in their own money and they approve yeah. everything that makes them money. And all of it's like it's similar to the Treasury departments in like banks and stuff It's the same thing. One thing like, you know, liberals, I like to steal this from liberals. Liberals talk about separation of church and state because of the fact that they didn't want religious uh, people to take control of the government and use the government as a weapon and tool to push their interests on everyone else. But they allow private corporations to do that. This is why I'm against, from a principled point, I understand it practically, but from a principled point, I believe there should be a separation between the government and business, the government and corporations. Subsidies, sure. As long as they act in the public interest, I could see maybe an exception for sub subsidies. But the rule is the government should be, shouldn't be incentivizing any kind of behavior in the corporate private market. Because of stuff like this. But I digress. Let's continue. Placebo pills and stuff that <laughs> makes your brain die of too much sugar? Yeah, it leads to brain swelling. And I mean, but this is just a thin slice. This is just a microcosm. I mean, we see it at the USDA. Just in 2020, the USDA Dietary Guidelines for Americans Committee, 95% of the of the panelists had conflicts of, of, of interest with the food industry and the pharmaceutical industry. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, I mean, not only do they own stock in ultra-processed food companies, but they take gifts from ultra-processed food companies as well. So, I mean, this is a, I mean, this is happening across the board. And I think if there's anything that Bobby can do and do well, it's, I mean, there are lots of things he can do, but I mean, I, I think getting the conflicts of interest out of these agencies would be, is crucially important. So that, to me, that's my number one priority. If 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 RFK does nothing else but remove the conflict of interest, he won. He'll be the best health secretary in a long damn time. Because this is a problem. We need outsiders in the government. Because if you want change, it's outside. It's always outside. The insiders don't want to do it because of the conflict of interest. They want to protect what's giving them their cushy jobs, their status, their money, their power. Insiders are going to protect that to the na teeth and nail. You need an outsider to come in. Because the, uh, the interest of the outsider is, I want change because I'm, not, I'm on the out group. That's why a common tactic 
of people like this is to try to bring these people into their fold and say, hey, you can be a part of this too. But they know they can't do that with RFK. This is why they're coming out. This is why they're putting out all these stories against them. This is why they're trying to do all this hit piece against them. Call him kooky. Call him crazy. Because they can't, they know they can't have someone like this have power. This is why they're threatening to f uh, fire themselves if he becomes numb, if he gets confirmed. And you, you, you see it. You see the corruption. Obvious. You see the health outcomes that we have in this country. If what they were doing was working, there was no way in hell RFK would be even a nominee for this position. But it's not. And instead of looking at themselves, blaming themselves, hey, we gave the American people a bad outcome, and then you get an RFK. No, they want to blame, oh, American people are stupid because they're just not gullible enough to just go along with what we, we have here. Because we're not passive enough to accept the bad outcomes that we're getting from our health institutions. I'll let the video wrap up and then I'll give my final thoughts. You're, you're, great, Max, so you're, Max, you're saying the people that run Twinkies shouldn't be setting the food pyramid? I think that's probably a pretty smart idea. I yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I've always described the food pyramid as an economic instrument, and that's not fair. It's not fair to Americans who are employed every day to consume 6 to 11 servings of grains every day, according to the food pyramid, which thankfully has been retired. But, you know, I'm not all that sure that what it's been replaced by is any better. Yeah. And so the we need to. The food pyramid was a pyramid scheme to get certain people <laughs> rich and other people fat and sick. All Indeed. right, Max, we could go. And then you got old, old Zimpic coming out just to, you know, help rectify the situation that they helped create. What what a life. What what a life, huh? This is why they're scared of RFK. I think I gave a good synopsis. I think I gave a good summary. We want them in. Make America healthy again. I think the the one the pick the most I told you, RFK was the pick I was most looking forward to. Because I actually believe that, hey, like we need some reform in this country. Look at the health outcomes. Most of, most majority of adult Americans are obese, huh? In the 1960s, when RFK uh, when RFK's uncle was president, he put a whole program out to incentivize health, fitness. Now, many people were saying, "Oh, he was trying to prepare these kids for war," but at the end of the day, working out <laughs> it, it's never bad advice to say go work out. That's why I take me and my health and my family very seriously. I never believed in the food pyramid. I used to skip breakfast every day growing up. People used to be like, oh, my God, that's unhealthy. But I felt super productive. It worked for me. I, I kept with it. Now I see many of my friends. I'm like, damn, you guys got fat, man. You got I still look the damn, damn near. I still look damn near the same body wise anyway. When I was in high school. Because I didn't believe all this hype. And then when I found this out, I said, yeah, it don't, it don't make sense. But, hey, you know, I digress, man. We uh, One thing this video exposed, it exposed that there's a lot of problem in our health institutions, and they don't deserve any benefit of the, of the doubt right now. This is the, a review against the entire health establishment, and I'm here for it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me, disagree with me? YouTube, don't censor me. Don't ban me, please. I'm just asking questions, right? Ask me a question I can't answer, not an answer I can't question. That is the philosophy of this channel. Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.